based on density matrix, so I'm not going to go deeper. We will just continue from here. So what is the property of a density matrix? The property of density matrix is that it is n by n, right? If I have an n dimensional. For example, for a qubit, the density matrix must be two by two because n equal to two. Is that okay? That's the dimension of the space. So we use two n by n numbers because this is a matrix, right? This is n by n, right? To describe a state. Now, if you say this is a pure state and then you use n by n matrix, it looks like it's a waste because for pure states, I only have uh, n complex number, right? Remember this? For pure state, you will be able to represent as a0, 0 state, a1, 1 state, all the way to a n minus 1, n minus 1 state. I mean, basis states, right? So I only need to give you n complex number, I completely de describe my pure state, right? And now you make this into n by n, actually I need more, way more numbers. Doesn't look very useful. But, it, uh, but at the same time, you get rid of the phase because when you do this outer product, all this phase will get canceled and the phase are not that important, right? So uh, that is the good thing about this. But more importantly is that it can be used to describe a very complex ensemble. Because for a complex ensemble, I did not write here, right? For ensemble or the mixed states, maybe I should say mixed states, right? For the mixed states, you can have infinitely number of pure states. Because I can mix up anything, right? I can mix one that is, uh, I mean, just any, any combination of alpha and beta with, of course, alpha squared plus beta squared equal to one. I can have all this state, right? How do I describe it? Well, if I have one trillion states, then I need one trillion times n complex number. But by using this density matrix, I only need n by n complex number. That is uh, one, one thing about it, right? Uh, and that is because in many properties, we don't need the full description of individual uh, pure states. Right? We just need, uh, for example, you will find that for many descriptions, this density matrix is enough to find them. For example, when you, when you want to find the average value or the expectation value of uh, an ensemble, the density matrix represents all of them already. Okay, you, you will see that, but this just to let you know. Right? So density matrix has uh, the following properties. It is uh, semi-positive uh, definite. So what, what, what does it mean by semi-positive definite? It is this. First, it needs to be Hermitian. This is ugly. What I'm trying to say is rho dagger equal to rho, right? So a semi-positive definite matrix is Hermitian. That's the first thing. And it can have, it, can, it has the foreign property, one of them, they are equivalent, okay? For example, all the eigenvalues are larger or equal to zero. Here is what you mean by Semi-positive definite is positive because all larger than zero, but it's semi because it includes zero values, okay? This is equivalent to, so this one and two, any of this, or the expectation value, you apply any vector to it to find the expectation value, they are all uh, larger than zero, okay? This is just something for you to keep track of. We don't, uh, maybe we need it, but not that important now. Or it can be represented as 
a, a product of its of a matrix and its uh, a joint matrix. Okay. So you can try to think of this is very useful, right? When we do with matrix, sometimes you reduce it to one by one matrix, which means it's just a number. Reduce it to a one by one matrix. Understand what it means. If it is one by one means a number, then basically it's saying that this is a real number when it is one by one, right? Hermitian you, uh, complex conjugate equal to itself. And the value itself is eigenvalue, of course, is itself, right? Larger than one, right? And this needs to be positive because it's a number you take it out, it's larger than zero, right? And then it can be represent as a square root of something. But of course, uh, because it's real, then uh, it, you can say this is just uh, A times A. Okay, so this is the meaning of semi-positive definite. We might not use too much in this class, but if you go deeper, this is something actually guiding many theories in the future when you read the paper or in your future study. So it's good to understand. Okay, any questions? Another property of the density matrix is that its trace needs to be one. What does it mean? It means you add up the diagonal term. You, it needs to be one. And why? Because later you will see that if you try to diagonalize this matrix right into the basis of each of the uh, uh, diagonalized into the basis then you basically each of them is particular for the pure state you will you will you will, you will see that uh, each of them is represent the probability of getting uh, that outcome so of course you add them you need to be one okay we will see more later but the mix Final message is that a matrix is a density matrix. I can give you any matrix. Is it a density matrix to check it? You need to check whether it is positive semi-definite and if the trace sum to one. Is that okay? Let's try to uh, look at some of the properties, right? For example, let's look at a mixed state, which we discussed last time. I mean, last time we discussed the pure state, I think, right? For example, I have a mixed state which has 50% of zero and 50% of one over square root two, zero plus one, right? Again, I remind you, this itself is a pure state. It's a superposition of the basis vector, but it's a pure state. Now I have two pure states, right? So if you go back to that equation, the density matrix equals to summation i equal to 1 to k, pk, and then I just call this psi i. Right. This is the general equation of a density matrix, right? What is k in this case? Not, not PK, should be PI. What is K in this case? Two. two. K equals to two because I have two pure states, right? So that's, that's why this row, of course, equal to first I equal to one is 0 0.5 times the outer product of zero of the first pure state, which is this. And then, P2 is also 0 0.5. I make it simple. And then the outer products of the second pure states, right? How do we do it? It becomes 1 over square root 2. This is easy. You just need to follow 0 because now it needs to be the bra. The whole thing times the cat. Do I do something wrong? It should be cat instead of bra, right? be cat, right, times the bra. So here just uh, let's practice some uh, math, some operation. But uh, is this okay when you see this? Everyone okay with what I've written? Yeah? 
And what you need to do is purely just distribution law, right? The first one is EC 0 0.5. We already have 0 0.5 at the 0, 0 state. Again, this is just an object, right? X hat, Y hat. I just keep them. Plus square root 2 times square root 2 is 1 over 2, right? Times 0 0.5. This becomes 0 0.25. I just take everything out. And then I start doing the distribution rule, right? 0, 0 plus 0, 1 plus 1, 0 plus 1, 1. Right? What I'm doing is just 0, 0, 0 times 0, 0 times 1, 1 times 0, 1 times 1. Okay? And then I just collect the term, right? So this becomes 0 0.7500 because I have 0 0.500 and 0 0.2500. Any questions? Just feel free to ask. Then the rest is just 0 0.25. 0 0.25 times 1. A little bit messy, but uh, you should study by yourself. How do I write this in a matrix form? If you forgot, let's just review. What is the meaning, for example, 0, 1? All you need to do, just write in the matrix form. What is the matrix form for 0 cat? Column, right? 1, 0. Bra form for uh, matrix 1? 0, 1. Yeah? And then you just do matrix multiplication. Row times column. The first one is 0. Right? Do you see that? Row, although it only has one, times the second column, then this is one. And then the rest will be zero, right? Again, because row times column, row times column. Each row times column give you the index, right? So basically, but when you're familiar with this, you already know this is zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So this just give me 0 0.75, 0 0.25. 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Okay. What is the trace of this guy? 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25 equal to 1. Okay. Um, no, actually, I don't want to do MATLAB here. I was planning to do a MATLAB, but let's just skip here. I want to diagonalize it, but we don't have much time. But this is, I did not teach you anything new. We just used that equation to come up with the density matrix. And we appreciate that compared to last time, when we have the pure state, what we got was this. Uh, it is only diagonal. Right, I forgot where it is, but it is different from the pure state. Okay, then how do we know if a matrix is pure state or a uh, mixed state? This is very important to check, right? For example, you do experiment, you, you came up with a density matrix. How do you know if it is a pure or a mixed state? Question. Yeah. Because we came up with, uh, yeah. You started with a pure state, so at the very top, and then you ended up with the answer in the blue, at the very end, that's the mixed state. No, no, no. This whole thing is a mixed state. A mixed state, in this case, is composed of two pure states. Okay. Each of them has 50% of chance. In this case, you can treat it as an ensemble. Maybe we have many different particles. 50% of this, 50% of this. Okay, and then P is just the density matrix. Rho is the density matrix, P is the probability of that pure state. Yeah, of its constituents. Okay, so the whole thing is still mixed state, but what we're trying to say is 
instead of describing them as this uh, cumbersome, or I may have one trillion different pure states, I calculate it. Now I come up with only two by two matrix to describe the whole system. This is the rule. Oh, uh, of course you need the rule is that after you construct this, yours needs to be a density matrix, which means the trace needs to be one. You need to be positive semi-definite. If you come up with something that doesn't make sense, for example, I say I have 50% zero, 50%, 150%, one plus zero, another 25%, the matrix you're going to get is not a real density matrix because it's not physical. Yeah, but if you start with something physical, you should get the right density matrix. Yes, yeah. equivalent to seeing if it's positive, semi-definite, just to see if it's Hermitian. No, no, uh, two things, Hermitian and one of these. Yeah, so this is a little bit confusing. Okay. For the same system, you have the same dimension, right? Let's say one qubit, you have two by two, but you have two qubit, you have four by four. It depends on the size of your system. How many were, I mean, the, yeah. You see what I mean? And so this, this example means that the two qubit the Okay, still one qubit. It's just that it had 50% to be at this stage and 50% at this stage. Yeah, this is a good question, right? Okay, so I can have one trillion of this. I have still one qubit because I don't know which state it is in. Yeah. So how do we check if it is a pure or mixed state? Uh, uh, we did not. We won't go into the uh, math, right? I just give you the result. When it is a pure state, then you will find that the trace of row square equals to one then it is a pure state. If it is a mixed state, the trace of row square will be less than one. So why is that? It's not difficult to understand. I mean, we are not proving it, right, rigorously. But think about for a pure state, your density matrix, think about how you get the density matrix. You get it by row equals to something right and if this is a pure state you diagonalize it you actually will get a density matrix in this form because each of this is referring to the probability of getting a certain basis let's just think about basis not even think about uh, the generalized state let's say all the pure states right is only the basis if you are zero, zero, you have the one here, right? 100% are zero. If you have 100% one, then your one is at a lower state, right? Here I have a more uh, higher dimensional space, but you only have one state, then your matrix must be diagonalized, must be zero, zero, one, and then zero, 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 right? And then naturally the square of this guy will not change, right? It will still have the same form. Right? So its trace is going to be equal to 1. But for a mixed state, it will be different. Well, you might have P1 somewhere and then maybe P2 somewhere. There, I'm talking about after I diagonalize it. There are some equals to 1. They basically saying that what is the probability of each of these diagonalized bases, right? There's some equal to 1. But they must be smaller than 1, right? Now, if you do the square of it, this is diagonalized, right? So it is just equal to P1 square P, and then P2 square, right? Whatever, maybe zero somewhere and then P2 square, right? Because you multiply two diagonal matrix, it's just equal to the diagonal element multiplied to itself, right? And anything smaller than one, you take the square, it's going to be smaller than it. And then you sum it together. Originally, you sum over this diagonal is one. Then, of course, you sum over the square of the diagonal elements. It needs to be smaller than one. 
Okay, so let me see, maybe. Yeah, uh, uh, let me show you some numerical example. But it's okay if you, uh, yeah, it, it's better to understand a little bit, but these two equations are important, yeah. So we missed the big it's possible, but we can always diagonalize the animal, the, the matrix, right? You, for example, here you see that this is not long, this is long zero. Yes. So I cannot use this to prove what I said, but I can diagonalize it, right? I you can always diagonalize a matrix, meaning that I only have the, uh, eigen, I use the eigenvector as the basis, right? Then I will get only this diagonal. They still need to sum up to one because the trace does not change when you rotate them, when you diagonalize them. Yeah. So that's why here when I write in here, I assume it's diagonalized already. But once I diagonalize, because it's pure, it must be only have one entry. But this I have multiple entries. Right? And these multiple entries must be smaller than one. So their sum of their square must be smaller than one when the sum of the piece equals to one, right? Uh, uh, let me show you some numerical example. Well, last time we talked about the pure states, for example, we have a pure state that we derived last time, one over four, right? It's in the last set of slide. Is it one over four? Yeah. One over four, square root three over four, square root three over four, and then three over four. Correct? This is row, right? So what is row square? It's one over four, square root three over four, square root three over four, three over four, times one over four, square root three over four, Square root three over four, three over four, right? Uh, very bad writing, but so when you do it, right? The first one is what? One over four times one over four plus square root three over four times square root three over four, right? So this is one over four plus nine, I mean, one over 16. plus nine, not nine, right? Plus three. Three over 16 for the first entry, right? How about the second one? Uh, now I have one over four times, uh, and actually I, I will just skip it because that is what, not what I need, right? Skip it, right? You, you guys calculate yourself. I look at the last entry. The large, last entry is what? 3 over 16. And this one I'm wrong again. This is 16, not 4. Right? Plus 9 over 16. Do you see this? Are you okay with this? 1 over 4 times 1 over 4 plus this one. So become 3 over 16. And then the last entry is 3 over 4 times this one. 3 over 4. So it becomes this one, right? So what is the trace? One plus three plus three plus nine divided by sixteen. That's one. Right. We know that already, but just uh, to prove that, right? So I hope I think numerical example is good. Help you. It's easy to help you. It can help you to understand the equation better. Right. Whenever you read some equation, you don't know exactly what it's talking about. Do some numerical substitution, then you will be very clear. And it doesn't have to be general. Of course, you want to warn yourself, or oh, maybe that is wrong. But usually just a specific case can help you get a lot of insight. Okay. Now, what if it is mixed state? Mixed state is the one that we uh, discussed last time, not today. Last time we have a mixed state, which is this, 1 over 4, 0. 0, 3 over 4. Again, 
Their trace is one. Last time, I think I said 20% zero states and 75% one state. That's how I get to this density matrix. In this particular case, it is already diagonal because I use the basis as the uh, pure state. So the row square, just multiply them because now it is diagonal, so it's 1 over 16, 9 over 16, right? And what is the trace? It's just equal to 10 over 16, right? It's smaller than 1. So just, just to prove the how you verify the uh, how you verify the whether a density matrix matrix is pure or mixed, yeah. So if we have like a matrix, we can tell its density matrix. I just want to read the paradigm to it. Yeah. Uh, by the it being a positive positive semi-definite matrix and its trace being one. Yes. And then that density matrix can now represent a pure state or a mixed state. Correct. Which we then have to figure out by looking at the trace of, of it times itself. Whether it's pure or mixed. Yes, yes. Uh, the trace of is square, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So then the density matrices, they, before you diagonalize them on the diagonal, those are the probabilities for, for either pure or mixed. Is that? Uh, before, before diagonalization? Before diagonalization, you actually cannot say uh, what these probability are. They sum to be one, but they do not represent a simple probability. But once you diagonalize it, it's basically talking the probability of its eigenvector state. Yeah. Okay, so why we want to do this? The final thing is for the expectation value, right? After all, in physics, you you cannot just keep doing math. Uh, I mean, the I mean theory is the point. What you measure, what you can measure, that is the real thing that that is important to us, right? So that's why uh, we have this density matrix. But let's look at, uh, for a pure state first, how do we find the expectation value? For example, I have an operator M. Operator corresponds to some observable, maybe the spin, the momentum, the position, right? It's an operator, so it's a matrix. Uh, what is the expectation value uh, for a vector, right? For Vector V, right? Vector is what we're talking about. This is the state. I have a system with V as the state, which is a vector. Remember, we say that everything in this classroom can be represented by a single state. Although it's complicated, it's still a single state, right? That is the V. And then we want to measure, for example, what is the temperature of this room? Then maybe there's a temperature operator. I apply to this state, then I might get the temperature. I'm not sure if we have something like this. Right? I, I can be wrong. But this is the M, right? So what is the expectation value? Expectation value. It means what is the FH value we can get when doing this measurement, right? Is equals to, do you still remember what is that? V and V, yeah? You just sandwich it by the bra and cat, right? This is the expectation value. If some of you are not very familiar to this because you did not take similar course before, just take it for granted. And then when you do substitution, you will appreciate that that, that is correct, right? Okay. Sometimes to study well in quantum mechanics is don't ask. <laughs> just swallow it. <laughs> if you ask too much, you will be very uh, frustrated because it doesn't make sense. For example, let's take a look. The expectation value. Did I lose the recording? Oh, okay. I'm skipped, but right, there's no windows. Okay, the expectation value, I think, oh, this is much better. The expectation value of sigma z, of c, 
zero, right? I have a state which is at zero. What is the expectation value of sigma c? Sigma c is the m I gave you. This is the m, right? The matrix corresponding to the measurement. And later you find that this is corresponding to the spin of the tra uh, transistor. But but you, you just think, no, no need to worry about this. Let's just do the math. By definition, I'm going to do this, right? Okay, so just go through the math. Zero in bra is one zero. Sigma C is zero, zero, one zero, zero, negative one. And then zero in cat is this, okay? And before that, let me ask you, what is the expectation value of the zero state? If you know that already, it's just equal to one. The zero state has been one just by definition, right? So let's see if this is the case. I first do the first multiplication. Uh, I will get, like, do this first. This, uh, now I cannot really use the point. Okay. You, hmm? can you see it? Okay, uh, so I'm going to do a multiplication, right? One times one equal to one, right? And zero plus zero is zero. So the first term is one, the second is zero. And then I get this, right? So what I'm doing is just to, right? Multiply this one and then, uh, and this one, and then add them together. Then I get this one, right? Just uh, be very careful about this. And now what is this one? This one is equal to what? One. one times one plus zero times zero. It's just a number equals to one. Okay, so the expectation value is one. Is that correct? Yeah, I expect that, right? This is exactly my expectation. It turned out this is the eigenvalue lambda zero of the sigma, right? So you can do similar thing for one, maybe for time, I'm going to uh, skip it. I do want to uh, try another one. What if the V equals to one over square root four, zero plus square root three over four, one? Let me just repeat the same thing, right? But this time I'm going to be very uh, careful I mean, I'm going to uh, not going to waste the time on the bracket notation in the homework. I ask sometimes I ask you to use bracket notation to something. Sometimes use the matrix. This one I directly use the matrix. What is the matrix form so for this vector for the bra? Position the square. Yes, uh, I actually should not have square root here uh, for the first one. Oh, I have. No, no, I should have, sorry. Yeah, there should be a square root, right? So that they're square at two, uh, one. So did I do something wrong before? Okay, this is already density matrix. That's why I don't have the square root. Okay, how do you write it? You write it as square root one over, one over square root four and then three over four square root. Yeah, that makes things uh, much easier. And then the matrix again, zero, zero, negative one, right? This is the eraser. Okay. And the whole thing times one over square root four, square root three over square root four, okay? So now you start doing the matrix multiplication, right? The first one is going to give me one over square root four, minus square root three divided by four, right? The reason I get minus again is because I multiply this by this and then multiply this by this, add them together, then I get this. Now with this then I continue to do the multiplication with this, right? What do I get? I'm not going to give the final answer, I just type this is square root one over four, plus negative one times three over four. All right, correct? Yeah, with this, of course, I will get negative uh, two over four, which is uh, negative 0 0.5. But most importantly, you see that the 
the uh, expectation value actually is just like a classical meaning, right? I have 25% to get one. This is like 25% to get the value of one. And then I have 75% chance to get the value of negative one. That's the expectation value. Because I have more chance at one, right? So that is the expectation value of a pure state. So I don't show it, but I want to show you. Um, uh, maybe I can skip this one also. I mean, I mean, uh, I don't show it, but basically, you see that it's just equal to the probability times the uh, ex eigenvalue, or uh, probability times the uh, expected outcome, and then you do the summation, right? So this is basically telling us this is like summation of the probability times the possible output, which makes sense, right? Okay. Now, then why do we want to use the density matrix? This is a little bit messy now. The general expectation value Right? As we just said, if I have many different states, isn't that is equal to summation i equal to 1 to k if it is a mixed state, right? Even your pure state, your k equal to 1 times the probability of that state and then times the expectation value, right? I just show you that the expectation value is the state sandwich the uh operator right so for each this for each uh uh each pure state in the uh, mixed state right it has certain probability which is pi so i find the expectation value of that state for example is for zero i have expectation value of one right for uh, one i have expectation value of negative one and then based on their probability i add them together that is the expectation value of the whole thing Okay. Um, I also want to skip the proof. You can prove that this is just equals to the trace. It's just all matrix multiplication of M times summation I equal to 1 to K PI I I. Uh, a way to prove this is just make it left and right hand side and then just plug in the matrix multiplication form, right? For example, I, I, I won't prove it, but just give you an example. For example, uh, how to say it? For example, right? You don't need to know. For example, what, what is this multiplication? You think that it's just the row times column, row times column for the matrix, because now this is what you have. You have this, and then you have this, and then you have this, right? So what we are doing is that I first times this row times this column, give me the first entry. And then this is going to add to this guy. And then I have another row times also the same entry, and then times this guy. And then you add them together. You try to prove in this way, right? This one, you will find that it is just equals to, uh, for example, this is just equals to a lot of summation. Summation, uh, maybe I put in another color. So it's very easy moving it around. Moving what around? Okay, you, you are, okay, you are, okay. I, I will answer your question. Let me finish writing this. So summation I, summation J, and then what you're doing is just uh, uh, 
basis vector of this guy, Vi, right, times the star, times the Mij, and then times Vj, right? Something like this, if you want to prove, right? Anyone want to prove or just Google, you will find it. And if you have difficulty, just come to me. I will show you how to prove it. Now, he's, he's asking then why I want to uh, move this one to this one, right? The reason is that the motivation of density matrix. The top one, you see that the M is inside. It looks like uh, the whole term is entangled with, uh, not entangled, I mean mess up with the what you're trying to move. But actually the second term so show us that it can be isolated as the product of two terms. One term is what you want to move, what, what you want to measure what you want to measure. The second term is just, is independent. Of what you want to measure. It is the characteristic of the system itself. Do you see that? It's the characteristic Exactly, and this is the density matrix. So, so we try to find out how to find the expectation value of the system, and by definition, it's the top one. It's this one. By definition, it's the top one. And we show that it's equal to the trace of the operator times the so-called density matrix. And that's why density matrix is useful. Because that density matrix represent myself already, represent the system. And then whatever I will get, then you just multiply with whatever you want to measure. Take the trace. Okay. Yeah. Question? So doesn't have to be a diagonal matrix in this field? Which one? No, it doesn't have to be diagonal. Nothing needs to be diagonal so far. We make it diagonal earlier just for the P, just because to show that uh, you, easy to see row square needs to be one or a negative one, right? Because the, the uh, okay, the important thing is that for matrix, there's some quantity, they are independent on how you look at it. It means independence of the coordinate system. For example, how heavy I am does not depend on whether uh, you look at me from the top or from the bottom. But how long I am maybe it depends on which diagonal angle you look at me, right? So this, my weight, is kind of like the trace of the matrix. However you rotate it, the trace is still the same. So this is the characteristic. Now the eigenvalue does not change even you rotate me. So there is something that belongs to me. Uh, it's not does not depend on how you measure me, how you look at me. So that is, uh, I got distracted, but yeah. So, so the drawing is not very good, but then uh, this is one, right? I just to show you that this motivation, why density matrix is important. And then let's take a look if this is the case. Do you remember we just done an example? What is the expectation value of uh, this system, this one, one, uh, which one? No, not this one, sorry. Yeah, for this, for this system, one over square root four, zero, three, square root three over square root four, one, right? Which, uh, we got it from, uh, here. Okay, this one, if, uh, you forgot this was actually the same. This one has the mixed state of fifth, uh, how much percent? Has the state of 25% zero and 75% one. Uh, are you, do you agree with this? This state has 25% zero, right? That's why I got one over four and 75% one, right? And then later we try to find the expectation value here and it gives me zero, negative 0 0.5, right? So now I'm going to use this equation to that density matrix. What is the trace 
of sigma z, right? That is what we're trying to measure. And the density matrix we just did uh, 1 over 4, 0, 0, 3 over 4. Okay? So the trace, of course, is 1, 0, 0, negative 1. 1 over 4, 0, 0, 3 over 4, the whole thing. And if you multiply it, you will get 1 over 4, 0. It's diagonal, right? You just multiply them, negative 3 over 4. What is the trace? Negative 0, 0 0.5, right? So just a numerical example to show you that, hey, instead of doing this complicated stuff, this is a mixed state, so my title is actually. So, is it, is it a mixed state? No, no, no. <laughs> this is a mixed state, but 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 this is not a mixed state. This is uh, what I'm showing here is a pure state. Uh, the set here is a pure state. Yeah, but but this is a mixed state. What I'm showing you here, this is a mixed state. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit uh, messy, but uh, in summary, right? Uh, I just go through some math. But what I want you to understand is that density matrix is so special because when you try to measure the trace at uh, the expectation value of a system, you find that you can always factorize it as the trace of the product of the operator and the density matrix. That's why density matrix is important. Okay? And we went through all the math on how all the calculation, yeah. So when you say that you don't need a full description of all pure states for density matrix, that means because you have the probabilities of the different pure state, like what does it mean by don't need a full description? For the important property, for example, the expectation value, we, own, we don't need to know exactly how each pure state, uh, what each pure state is, and also their percentage. All we need is the corresponding density matrix, as it is proved here, right? For example, I want to know the expectation of this K can be 1 trillion, right? So for the same density matrix, it can come from different ensemble, right? Uh, but we can have the same uh, expectation value. Well, when you say that we don't need to know the percentages again, I'm confused. In principle, uh, you even don't know what are the constituents, the exact constituents. But don't you need that to construct the density matrix? Oh, no. Yeah, of course you need that if you want to construct the density matrix from that direction. But very often, uh, to describe this system, uh, you don't need to know all the details. You see, just like uh, I'm trying to describe the Earth. I would say, okay, it, it has this radius uh, and it has this eccentricity. It has this mass. I did not need to say how many atoms it has and where was their distribution. So I could have another planet have exactly the same property, but they are constructed by different type of atom or uh, they have I mean, other things that may be different, right? You, you see what I mean? Because maybe my goal is to only understand if this earth can fit into this hole, for example. And in here, my goal is to, the major goal in this physics is to know the expectation value, which is more relevant to our purpose, right? If you say, actually, I want to see if I can do some constructive interference or destructive interference, uh, with a certain state, then density matrix will, will not work, right? Because you even don't know exactly what it has, right? Uh, what, what pure state it has. Then you cannot do this constructive uh, calculation, interference calculation. But you can, con so you can construct a density matrix not dependent upon probability. Yeah, here it just show you from the fundamental what it is, right? Uh, maybe, uh, in experiment, you actually do not get a state. Maybe you prepare the state if you have the full knowledge, but then you use an ensemble, yeah. But but most of the time, you actually do not know, right? And you actually can uh, maybe get the density matrix through some uh, tomography, right? Yeah. Okay. 
so yes, for uh, exam, you need to know what they are. <laughs> but in reality, uh, they are not that important, or because we don't know. Yeah. So okay, uh, so we're trying to calculate more than Yeah. Uh, let's say if I use the projection operator, given constant, I can apply it to pure states, and I'll get an expectation value. But if I apply it to a mixed state, uh, then that method would not work. No, this is applied to general, right? So it would apply in either case. I thought part of the application here is because it's a mixed state, that's why we need this methodology with the density matrix to be able to calculate. Oh, the, yeah, the, the density matrix is the general form. So you can apply to either pure state or mixed state. And yes, it's the most useful when you have a mixed state. If you have pure states, uh, you can deal with the pure state fairly easily. But mixed states, you just might not classically ensemble. You basically tell me what is the what is the distribution of the air molecule in this room. You don't tell me exactly which molecule uh, is traveling at what speed. And then from the ensemble, I know what is the air pressure in this room. Right. So it's the most useful when I uh, have the mixed state. But if you tell me, hey, in this room, every molecule is traveling in the same direction with this velocity then I don't need to have any uh, ideal gas law because I already know their velocity. I know exactly what force is going to exert on the fall, on the wall, right? Okay, well, I guess. It's not about a co for computation. It's that we don't have the information of the mixed state. We probably only know its density matrix in reality. Just like the air molecule in this room. We try to, yeah, you can say we summarize it as ideal gas law is more computational effective, but more important is we just don't know exactly how each molecule works. Even you have this computational power. Okay, and here just to tell you that uh, this is the motivation of why people introduce the density states because they find uh, uh, the density matrix because they find that density matrix is a characteristic of the system just like my weight instead of they telling me telling you how many molecules i have they say oh this guy is uh, 150 pounds uh, because that's relevant because we want to the weight is relevant for the measurement in this case for example okay um, originally, I want to prove this, but maybe let me skip uh, proof the equation. I don't, I don't expect to put this into the uh, exam, right? But, but should I actually, maybe I should start a new topic next. And let, let's don't spend time to prove this. Let's just uh, start with the broad sphere, okay? Uh, and if you feel that you want the proof, I can send it to you, okay? Uh, it, uh, this is just an exercise to uh, play with the matrix, which is useful for those who want to continue to go to more.